Welcome to the Center for Gifted Education On Demand Learning, brought to you by Kindle Hunt Publishing Company. Why Center for Gifted Education Teaching Units? Today, we will explore the language arts units, highlighting perspectives, courage, and pursuit of justice. Why use Center for Gifted Ed Teaching Units? They are aligned to the College and Career Anchor Standards for Readiness, developed by William & Mary Center for Gifted Education, whose very long, rich history has supported gifted instruction, integrated curriculum model that links content, process, and theme, an interdisciplinary approach to connect all content areas, supporting multiculturalism, globalism, supporting habits of mind, helping students to be critical thinkers, authentic assessments, learning across disciplines, and fostering the 21st century skills of collaboration, communication, creativity, and critical thinking. Recognized by the National Association for Gifted Children, the Center for Gifted Ed Teaching Units target meaningful discussion and analysis. The integrated curriculum model is a framework for curriculum design and differentiation in all of the William and Mary units of study. It emphasizes advanced content, higher order thinking, and connection to overarching themes and issues as a foundation for curriculum development. We know that gifted students thrive at making connections. We also know that gifted students have complex thinking capacities and gifted students are very precocious learner. Thus, the integrated curriculum model really provides gifted learners with an opportunity to cultivate that advanced content through complex process and products with overarching issues and themes. The William & Mary Language Arts units employ advanced reading level literature as the catalyst for real learning. As seen in the figure, the integrated curriculum model is operationalized through the teaching of the concept, such as perspective, with the elaboration using the reasoning process, supported by the content and skills, such as literary analysis, interpretation, persuasive, creative, or expository writing, and linguistic competency and oral communication. The language arts curriculum units, beginning with grades 1 and 2, Beyond Words, all the way to grades 10 through 12, with change through choices, are built upon themes, concepts, and generalizations. We will be highlighting three of our new units, Perspectives, grades 4 and 5, Courage, grades 7 and 8, and also Pursuit of Justice, grades 7 and 8. You will notice that the units span a grade level or two, depending upon your student population and levels of learning. Each unit is mapped out to provide teachers with easy access to format, goals, lessons, and instructional models to assist with ready-to-go implementation. Let's take a look at the unit planner. The Language Arts Teaching Guide is designed and arranged to give teachers easy access to all instructional materials that are needed for implementation. Teaching models, reading resource lists, teaching tips, writer's notebook options, assessment options, rubrics, alignment to standards, a multitude of additional rubrics, vocabulary lists, and even letters to family are all provided in the teaching guide, making this implementation very accessible and easy for teachers to provide that total balance literacy program. One thing to keep in mind is typically a lesson is about 60 minutes in length. That may vary according to how your students are grouped together, whether they're cluster group, whether they're pulled out, or whether it's their foundation language arts block of time. 
A unit in and of itself was originally designed to be a semester's length of learning. What we can tell you is that with extensions and enrichment, a language arts unit may end up being your entire year's unit for language arts. The unit planner at a glance will be a great tool and resource as teachers begin to make their daily and their weekly lesson plans. It's a great overview of the lesson, the unit goals, the materials needed, the overview of the assignment, the teaching models that are supported, extensions, homework, and assessment. This will be the one place your teachers will want to bookmark and will be frequently using. Units are designed for high ability students. Language arts teaching strategies emphasizing higher level questioning, in-depth discussions, metacognition, concept teaching, higher level thinking, and fostering communication skills all promote and lead to higher student achievement gains. Units are intended as semester's worth of work, however, with extensions and or scheduling, the unit may be representative for the year's study. While the units do not include specific or in-depth emphasis on spelling and grammar, developmental reading, or extensive narrative writing, they do offer support and with continued extensions in these areas, in addition to perhaps supplemental materials such as junior grade book, the unit can definitely be representative for the year study. The average lesson is about 60 minutes across a block. However, with scheduling based upon your student readiness level and interest levels, this may vary. Sufficient instruction is provided for a variety of grouping models, whether you are cluster grouping, whether it is pull out, whether it's your foundation language arts block, all can be supported within the unit. Literature selections were considered for gifted readers in mind. However, know that both content and Lexile levels have been considered and alternative suggestions are also provided. Learning station suggestions can be found throughout the unit. Set up some learning stations in your room that help to cultivate passion, research, and choice for gifted students. Discussion plays a prominent role in students' learning. Teachers may want to consider using specific process to help to cultivate the elements of discussion. Socratic seminar is one method for organizing discussions and analyzing literature. A discussion log, much like a rubric, can also be a place where students can support their contributions and or elaborations, as well as those of their classmates. Students are expected to maintain a journal or a writer's notebook throughout the unit to record responses to reading assignments, as well as other information tasks. A three ring binder divided into three sections will help this implementation. One section as a vocabulary journal where students respond to independent reading and complete vocabulary webs, a response journal where students will respond to class and or entry prompts, and a third section, a literature journal, where students will respond to independent reading assignments and novels and a place where they might complete their literature webs. Another option for a writer's notebook might be a virtual notebook where students use a live binder as a place for depositing their journaling in response to literature, prompts, and vocabulary. The units have pre and post assessments in addition to journal response rubrics for the notebook, writing rubrics, evaluation forms for self, peer, and teachers, evaluation forms for oral presentations, and discussion rubrics. 
check out Rubristar or teachers.org as another extension and an opportunity for students and teachers to develop rubric to help support the unit. Units have been aligned with the English standards developed by the National Council of Teachers of English and the International Reading Association. William and Mary goals and outcomes frame each lesson. The common core correlations for William and Mary materials are available here as a PDF document. Let's take a look at perspectives. Perspectives is a unit for grades four and five. A few of the goals and outcomes are to develop analytical and interpretive skills in literature, to develop creative writing skills in a short story format, and to understand the concept of perspective in language. Below is a sampling of some of the lessons from perspective. Perspective definitely lays a foundation for the beginning understanding of literary elements of irony, conflict, and plot development. One of the overarching themes of perspective is to help students to understand not only their own perspective, but perspective from authors and different characters. And the ultimate goal is that students will be constructing the elements and designing their own short story. The literature selections in this unit will allow students the opportunity to view and study multiple perspectives. Students will be able to reflect on their own perspectives as well as the perspectives of authors and characters in many classic pieces of literature provided. Take a look at an idea for extending or enriching the understanding of perspective through optical illusions. Here are a couple of examples that help students to understand, enjoy, and draw optical illusions. In this lesson, students will be introduced to the form of fiction called short stories, and they will discover how the plot diagram for writing a cohesive and compact short story. The students will be reading and analyzing the very classic, The Ransom of Red Chief by O. Henry. Students will incorporate the use of one of the models known as the literature web as a tool to help them to organize their thoughts in their readings. Additionally, they will be assigned other short stories to read where they will complete several in-class tasks. Along with this might be a good place to extend in addition to perspectives and plot development, but other literary elements at this time. Let's take a look at courage, connections, and reflections for grades 7 and 8. A couple of the goals and outcomes are to develop analytical and interpretive skills in literature and informational texts and to provide persuasive, argumentative, creative, and expository writing skills, in addition to understand the concept of courage as it relates in language arts. A sampling of some of the lessons in courage will be an introduction to the concept of courage and a novel study choice, literary analysis through a project choice, the introduction of reasoning, and a variety of essays, short stories, and poems as they relate to courage. Below are listed some of the required readings where the students do have a book choice and a couple of the other lessons that also include some choice and some required readings. Other required readings, some very powerful essays, short stories, and poems that continue to further the student's understanding of the theme of courage. Um, in addition, these essays, short stories, and our poems are available for the students in their student guide. The purpose of this lesson is to develop literary analysis through project work Students are going to analyze and interpret from a couple choices of novels, and they're going to study generalizations about courage. Students are going to use their creativity 
and design a project. They're also going to develop an evaluation rubric. They may be working individually or with small groups. And there will be some kind of presentation, multimedia presentation involved. Uh, some extension ideas might be for students to use a platform such as Prezi or Glogster. Justice, grades 7 and 8. A couple of goals and outcomes are to develop persuasive, argumentative, creative, and expository writing skills, to develop reasoning skills in language arts, and to understand the concept of justice as it relates to language arts. A sampling from some of the lessons in justice will be the exposure to expository and argumentative writing, uh, the introduction to reasoning, the powerful imagery that can be found in analyzing picture books, literary analysis of poetry, and many classic pieces of literature will also help to reinforce students' understanding of justice. Below are the list of required books of Mice and Men, or No Promises in the Wind, To Kill a Mockingbird, or Warriors Don't Cry, or possibly The Night the Rose Spent in Jail. So this again is another example of where student choice plays an important factor in their understanding of the concept and theme. There's a list of some alternative books and movies you may want to explore. There are other required essays, short stories, and poems that also help to cultivate the concept of justice. In addition, some photographs, painting, and music are also included. And a very powerful Lesson 10 helps students see the powerful imagery behind the use of picture books in helping to further develop the concept of justice. Lesson 10, Analyzing and Interpreting Picture Books. The purpose of this lesson is for students to analyze and interpret picture books, to continue studying the concept of justice, to develop reasoning skills. The students will be reading some selections. They will also be working with Paul's Reasoning Wheel, one of the Center for Gifted Ed hallmark teaching models. They will discuss generalizations about justice and create group presentations based upon their discussions. The students will be using uh, their response journals for some of their entries. And presentations might include a wiki, a blog, or some type of multimedia display or presentation to capture the ideas about justice. There are seven well-developed research-based teaching models that help to support differentiation throughout all of the Center for Gifted Ed teaching units. The Center for Gifted Ed research-based teaching models have no right or wrong answer. These models really serve as a deposit for students' thinking. Um, it is a place where students can respond to literature and task uh, in the various units, a place where they can begin to develop their thinking and perhaps use these as a platform to take them to the next step. The concept development model is based on TABA's concept model from 1962, which is still relevant today, involves students understanding both inductive and deductive reasoning. It's really best to use this as an introductory lesson to the unit, and I think you will find this as one of the introductory lessons in and across many um, of the units. It can be done as whole group or in small groups, but it definitely is meant to promote discussion and a place for students to be able to record their understanding and their findings. Students can use many different themes to develop their understanding of the concept development model, and today we're going to look at perspective. Basically, the concept development model is a multi-step process where students 
provide either a linguistic or non-linguistic. You could use words or pictures, depending upon the age or level of students, or perhaps both, of examples of their understanding, for example, of the concept of perspective. They're then going to see if there are any ways to categorize their understandings. And then they're going to do just the opposite and make a list of all the non-examples of what perspective is not. And then students from their list of examples, their categorization, and their non-examples are going to come up with a generalization of their understanding of perspective or whatever concept you're trying to develop. Teaching a concept perspective is, categories of perspective might be, perspective is not, and a generalization about perspective might be, that perspective may be self-discovered or developed. This definitely shows an example of perspective. Generalizations are an important outcome of concept development. What are some characteristics of perspective? What can you say about perspective that is usually true? Your generalizations can be the prompt that would lead into a response or some kind of a writing task that may follow. Here are sampling of some social science concepts that could be a part of a concept development model. One of the visual ways to display this would be students creating a graffiti board. A literature web can help students to organize their understanding of a piece of literature through getting a sense of feelings, ideas, and images. Here's an example of a template for a literature web. The units are accompanied by a student guide and these templates are a part of the student guide. I encourage you to use them as just a template and allow students to design and create their own web, whatever that might look like, to include the different structures of the literature web. Here's a quick review of the components of the literature web to develop the keywords or phrases to understand the feelings that are being conveyed or expressed in the passage, to get an idea of what is the main idea, to understand the author's use of images and symbols, and for students to understand the structure of writing that is being used. This is the template for the full form of the literature web. It also includes structure. This is the primary literature web, which includes everything except the idea of structure. Vocabulary webs help students to understand the structure of the reading as it relates to the comprehension and the understanding and the development of word usage. Taxedo is a great place for students to also use um, a kind of word cloud, if you will, to help them develop their vocabulary web. This is an example of a vocabulary web. It could be used in its entirety, or perhaps you may want to focus on different aspects of the web depending upon what your outcomes are for a particular reading or lesson. And this is an example of a completed vocabulary web. But keep in mind, this really is a template. And as far as the structure and what it looks like in the design, again, venture out, let your students create their own structure, what it looks like. Perhaps it can be digital or some other type of format the hamburger model as it relates to persuasive writing. The bigger, the better. This is the template for the primary model for persuasive writing with an introduction, the development of three reasons, and a conclusion. This is the template for the hamburger model for persuasive writing with an introduction, elaboration, reasons, further elaboration, and conclusion. 
As you can see, the Dogwood model can be more supportive for a argumentative style of writing using the background of viewpoints and uh, opposing viewpoints with elaboration, reasoning, and conclusion. All of the Center for Gifted Ed Language Arts units do have the component of persuasive writing to use emotions to gain a vote, if you will, uh, of the reader. The argumentative style has also been included in some of the newer uh, units, such as justice and um, courage that were presented earlier. And this is where the writer simply tries to get the reader to consider an idea worth listening by really sharing credible facts, reasons, and sufficient evidence to honor uh, the valid perspective. This is an example of the persuasive writing scoring rubric that can be used, perhaps could be modified, and or something um, additionally that you may want to create in looking at persuasive writing uh, or some of the other writings that have been shared. Paul's reasoning model is next. There are eight key elements in the reasoning model that help to promote critical thinking, and they're really emphasized by the following eight elements. For students to have an understanding of issue, purpose, point of view, assumptions, concepts, evidence, inferences, and implications or consequences. Teachers may choose to introduce these terms one at a time so students become more familiar with them and perhaps some little mini lessons to help to lay that foundation, um, as well as this reasoning model becomes sort of a backdrop, if you will, for further writing and research. This is the template for the elements of reasoning. We call it the reasoning wheel, where students have an issue or a problem. They then follow the wheel from establishing a point of view all the way to understanding assumptions, implications, and consequences. Simplifying some of the reasoning terms with assumptions, helping students to understand beliefs and understandings, evidence, helping students to gather facts and data and information, inferences, helping students to come to conclusions, concepts, understanding of ideas, and implications or consequences, the kind of what ifs. This is another one of the hallmark models of the Center for Gifted Ed, and you're really going to see this reasoning about a situation or event in not only language arts, but social studies and the science units as well. Take a situation, for example, in Pursuit of Justice in Lesson 6, the situation is posed, will a longer school year help or hurt U.S. students? Students then look at who the stakeholders are, what the point of view of each of these stakeholders are, what assumptions each group may bring, and what implications of the views of each of the stakeholders are. And this becomes sort of a platform, if you will, for perhaps further research, uh, a writing response, or some kind of presentation. You will find that all the Center for Gifted Ed units have some kind of a development of a research model. In Lesson 8, The Pursuit of Justice, students will consider positions related to the concept and generalization of justice, and they will actually identify a problem or an issue, read about, identify points of view or arguments through informational resources. Next step, students will form a set of questions answered by a specific set of data. They'll gather evidence through research techniques such as surveys, interviews, analyzing primary and secondary source documents, and transforming their data so that it can be interpreted. 
And in conclusion, students will draw conclusions, make inferences, determine the implications and consequences, and communicate their findings through some type of oral multimedia presentation or written report. The Center for Gifted Ed teaching models that we have explored definitely promote critical thinking. In looking at critical thinking, there are three levels. Convergent thinking is one of them. This is where students are to produce or come up with some kind of correct answer to a stimulus or a problem. Next is divergent thinking. And here is where students, in a more broad sense, take a stimulus and come up with a multitude of ideas or thinking based upon a stimulus. And finally, evaluative thinking. This is where students are dealing with matters of judgment, value, and choice and they are characterized by their judgmental quality. The Center for Gifted Ed units and lessons definitely encourage convergent thinking, divergent thinking, and evaluative thinking. All of these are helping to develop that 21st century student that can collaborate, that can think creatively, that can communicate, and that understands high levels of critical thinking lead to deeper understanding and achievement for all students. Thank you for your participation in Kendall Hunt's William & Mary, the Center for Gifted Education Language Arts presentation. We hope the presentation has provided you with an overview of our programs, as well as a structure, models, and tips for implementation. If we can be of further service, please feel free to reach out to one of our account managers